And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new Caveman video show. Today, I'm joining an Olympus EM1S try-on organized by Wildlife at Passeries Park Facebook group and Olympus Singapore. So, I'll be testing the EM1S on Wildlife and give you my final verdict. First up, we saw some Oriental Pied Hornbills up on the trees. The Oriental Pied Hornbill is a species native to Singapore that declined to the point of local extinction. To regrow the population back to a healthy number, Empaths built nest boxes around to help facilitate their breeding. Next up, there is a red jungle fowl running around. Let me try if I could keep up with it. The camera was able to new focus on the running chicken. Next up, we encountered some bee eaters on the river bank. We proceeded to the beach and found this Pacific swallow perching on the side. This is usually a very difficult target to shoot, but I demonstrated to my friends that you can use the Pro Capture. There was also this tree with many heron nests by the beach. Look out for trees with big cavities. You can find hornbills nesting there. representative did mention that you can use the Intelligent Subject Detection AF. You can choose the one with the airplane's data set and that will help you with the birds in flight. Well, look at what we found here. A common golden back wood Becker. The entire footage was shot with a 300mm f4 lens which is 600mm equivalent in full frame. Look at how stable it is. Now I'm going to try the new OM Log 400 for video shooting. Now, let's try grading the footage with the LUT downloaded from the Olympus website. Do note that this was entirely shot handheld on the 600mm equivalent. Now let's try grading the OM Log 400 footage with another look. You can now do handheld high resolution mode on the EM1X. This will give you about a 50 megapixel file. It will not be as useful if your subject is moving too much. So. Let me give you my final verdict on the EM1S. In terms of portability, this is a huge contradiction to why you use a micro four thirds system in the first place. The EM1S is almost a kilogram in weight and is actually heavier than many full frame mirrorless cameras. You will only find this light compared to other DSLR flagships like the Canon 1DX Mark II and the Nikon D5. If you like the design and ergonomics of the integrated grip, you could always pair a HLG9 battery grip 
with the EM1 Mark II and you will have the flexibility of removing it when you desire a more compact and inconspicuous setup. The revised viewfinder keeps the resolution at 2.36 million dots but upgraded with 120 frames per second refresh rate with only a 0.05 second latency. This gives you a much lesser blackout especially when you are tracking and shooting fast objects. The viewfinder experience alone gives you greater confidence when handling the camera. You can now do handheld high resolution shots without the need to place the camera on the tripod. As you can see from my examples, this is still preferably used on stationary objects. Personally, I do not have a use for large image files but it is good to know that I have this option when needed. The Live ND mode is another clever use of computational photography. I was able to shoot at 32x ND mode handheld with the stationary objects remaining tech sharp. This is a handy feature but you can always buy ND filters for that purpose. It would be more useful if this can be applied to video shooting. There is now AI powered Intelligent Subject Detection AF which helps to detect and lock focus faster and more accurately. Currently, this is only loaded with planes, cars and trains dataset. I'm not sure who shoots trains professionally but the other two datasets are useful. It will help to lock on to the driver's helmet and the pilot's cockpit. The Olympus rep advised that birds dataset will be coming soon but in the meantime, we can apply the planes tracking to the birds. Unfortunately, with all the added processing power and larger body for heat dissipation, the EM1S is still unable to shoot 4K at 60p. There is also no 10-bit video encoding, even via external recorders. I swear I could make the switch if the video capabilities are there. There is now improved weather sealing up to a rating of IPX1. Most other manufacturers are shy to comment on their weather sealing. There is also a built-in GPS sensor, temperature sensor, manometer and compass. I'm not sure who uses all of all these features but the embedded GPS information is useful for birders like me where I could track and pinpoint the bird's location for subsequent visits. In conclusion, this is a hopeless and a hopeful camera. It is hopeless as Olympus seems to have lost it. I have been an Olympus fan for years and if you have followed their history, they have always pride themselves in compact and elegant solutions. That has been their design philosophy all along and it is contradictory to make a micro four thirds camera that is larger than a full frame one. However, this is also a hopeful camera as it embraces computational photography. What Olympus hopes to achieve is to eliminate the use of tripods and ND filters and many more. Not forgetting useful features like Pro Capture and live composites too. Computational photography is all the rage now and it is the true method to defy physics. Look at how much smartphones have caught up now with computational photography. Simulated bokeh and algorithm denoising, these are all things that defy the capabilities of the small sensor size. If manufacturers do not reinvent themselves, they will soon become a legacy product that has fallen prey to the innovation of smartphones. My own personal verdict is to get the EM1 Mark II plus the HLG9 battery grip. It is about 80% the capability of EM1S but at only half its price. There is also a 100 year anniversary silver EM1 Mark II model which doubles as a good memorophilia to collect. If you are enjoying my video, please remember to click subscribe for more. Thank you and bye bye.